Joseph is known for his many virtues. The Litany of Saint Joseph provides a complete list of them. Purity, chastity, fatherhood, dignified labor, and more. Plus the most well-known titles. He's the spouse of the mother of God, the guardian of the redeemer, the patron of the dying, the last one on the list, protector of the church. But it was the one just before the last one on the list that caught my attention. The terror of demons. Terror of demons. Not even Mary is given this title in her litany. I was very curious, what does this particular title of St. Joseph mean? Well, if we look at St. Joseph in the family setting, we see him with Jesus and Mary. Immediately, we would think, well, the title of Terror of Demons could apply to either one of them because they're sinless. And so the demons have no real power over them. Jesus is famously tempted when he begins his public ministry, but the devil is soundly defeated. Saint Joseph, however, for one thing, he's not perfect like them. He's not God, nor was he immaculately conceived. But yet as a member of the Holy Family, he does know holiness. Some of the saints and theologians, um, and I'll give you St. Alphonsus Liguori as an example, have even argued that although he was not conceived without original sin, that he was born without original sin, that he never sinned in all of his life as special graces were given to him because he was the earthly father of Jesus. How could you be attracted to sin living in the same house with the mother of God and the son of God? Secondly, God had so sanctified him that he was able to withstand the attacks of demons. And this makes Joseph terrifying to them because they wish to devour souls. To be the terror of demons is particularly important for him as he fulfills his, his unique mission as the head of the holy household. And he remains so as he protects the household of God, which is the church. On December 8th, in 1870, Pope Pius IX declared St. Joseph the patron and the protector of the universal church. And I'm just going to give you a little quote from that proclamation because he was moved to do this in a very special way. Quotes, when in these most troublesome times the church is beset by enemies on every side and is weighed down by calamities so heavy that ungodly men assert that the gates of hell have at length prevailed against her. Here's the interesting part. The venerable prelates of the whole Catholic world, it's probably a reference to the bishops, have presented to the sovereign pontiff their own petitions and those of the faithful committed to their charge, praying that he, the Pope, would deign to cons constitute St. Joseph as the patron of the universal church. So this was a petition coming from the bishops and the faithful around the world. That was December 1870 on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Pope Leo XIII in 1889 on the Solemnity of the Assumption once again wrote about devotion to St. Joseph in very troubled times for the church. He wrote this, quotes, Now, venerable brethren, you know the times in which we live. We see faith, the root of all the, young, the Christian virtues, lessening. We see faith lessening in many souls. We see charity growing cold the young generation daily growing in depravity of morals and views. The Church of Jesus Christ attacked on every side. Let me repeat the date, 1889, and the Pope is lamenting the loss of faith and the loss of morals among the youth. Most recently, Pope Francis on December 8th, again, a Feast of the Immaculate Conception. In the year 2020, Pope Francis inaugurated the year of St. Joseph, which came to a close on December 8th, on this past 2021. 
The popes know very well that St. Joseph is there to protect the church in all of her struggles, just as he protected the Holy Child from Herod and the Blessed Mother from shame. Today, too, as the church undergoes her latest share in the Passion of Christ, St. Joseph is lauded once again as our holy patron and protector. I have an image here, which I would like to show you before I close. And it's this new and unusual depiction of St. Joseph as the terror of demons. It was commissioned by Father Gately for um, one of his latest books, uh, no, excuse me, Father Calloway. And a print of this is available from the Divine Mercy Shrine. But you can see a very young, robust, and powerful image of St. Joseph, almost like a St. George, with the Holy Child and holding the demons at bay. So I'm going to close with this beautiful little intercession to St. Joseph, the terror of demons. You know, missionaries and exorcists and Satanists, Satanists even, all attest to the power of St. Joseph's intercession against demonic force, foes and forces. So here's the prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Joseph, terror of demons, cast thy solemn gaze upon the devil and all his minions and protect us with thy mighty staff. You fled through the night to avoid the devil's wicked designs. Now with the power of God, smite the demons as they flee from thee. Grant special protection, we pray, for children, fathers, mothers, families, and the dying. By God's grace, no demon dares approach when you are near. So we beg of you, St. Joseph, always be near to us, amen. Saint Joseph, Terra of Demons, pray for us. Queridos hermanos y hermanas, soy el Padre Esteban, párroco de la Iglesia de la Asunción aquí en Pixkin, Nueva York. Hoy celebramos la fiesta de aquel hombre que ha estado siempre en mi vida. Aunque ustedes no lo crean, soy de un pequeño pueblo del Ecuador llamado San José de Naranjal. Cuando entré al seminario, entré al seminario San José. Cuando me hice párroco, me hice párroco en la fiesta de San José. En la actualidad puedo decir que este hombre ha marcado mi vida con su ejemplo, con su testimonio. Como ustedes saben, andamos mucho en las redes sociales. Hacemos Facebook, damos comida, celebramos misa, no, incluso nos, nos hacemos dije, famosos. Pero ¿qué podemos aprender de San José? Que la fama solamente depende de Dios y para Dios. Nosotros, miserables criaturas, solamente podemos gloriarnos de nuestro pecado, pero también de la redención que nos da el Señor. San José nos enseña que no debemos ser importantes para el mundo sino simplemente para Jesús y para Dios. Justo esta semana escuchaba una, un título a San José que le decían, el Redentor del Redentor. Fue San José quien cuidó a Jesús. Fue San José quien enseñó a Jesús sus primeros pasos. Fue San José quien alentó a Jesús a cumplir la misión del Padre. Fue San José quien cuidó a la Virgen Santísima. Oh glorioso patriarca de quien nacemos todos nosotros. Hoy queremos encomendarnos a San José patrono de la iglesia, patrono de las familias, patrono de una buena muerte. Que San José nos dé la humildad que necesitamos, la simpleza de vida que necesitamos, y que el confiar siempre en Jesús, sin pruebas, sin trabas, sin dudas, sin miedos, porque San José nos enseña que solamente en el abandono total a Cristo encontramos nuestra felicidad. No busquemos ser famosos al mundo, sino solamente para Dios nuestro Señor. ¿De qué nos sirve postear grandes cosas en el internet, en las redes sociales, si al final perdemos el centro de nuestra vida, que es Jesús nuestro Señor? Si alguien se gloría, que se gloría en la cruz de Cristo. Si alguien quiere ser famoso, que se haga famoso a través del amor de Cristo, porque todos dependemos de Él y para Él. En esta fiesta de San José, a cada uno de ustedes, felices fiestas. Que San José nos bendiga siempre y que nos haga santos. Dios le bendiga siempre. Y en este sábado, que también la Madre de Dios sea nuestra fortaleza. Se les quiere mucho. Bendiciones.